Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Leo is here from the Health and Wellness Sport. And of course, you remember I told you and I promised you on uh, the previous live that I will explain the metabolism of testosterone on this board so that you can actually get the bigger picture of what this looks like. Now, this is a video that is intended to actually change the life of that person who is suffering from erectile dysfunction, that person who has man boobs, that person who has, that's man actually, because it's a video for the men. That man who has super emotions, thinking that he's depressed and all that, because of high estrogen in his system. Therefore, this is one of the videos that is going to actually solve that. And also, uh, the men who are bald and have problems with erectile dysfunction, this is also a video for you because of dihydrotestosterone, including men that have an enlarged prostate and those who are suffering from prostate cancer. Now, if you're enjoying this content from us, Kindly consider subscribing on this channel. Also, like and share the videos because through doing that, you will help us grow as we help you understand health in a language that is actually easier. Okay, good. Now, again, if you have not watched the live that I did on the prostate enlargement or prostate cancer skin screening, which is called the PSA screening, you can actually go on the live section and just check it out so that you can actually enjoy this content. So this is going to serve as a way to make you understand the first and introductory part of that life. So welcome on board. Now, this is a channel for testosterone metabolism. Understand this, that testosterone is a male hormone, okay, and is produced in the testicles. There's a signal that actually comes from our CEO. The hypothalamus is like our CEO. And the hypothalamus actually sends a signal to our managers. This is what we call the pituitary gland. And this pituitary gland has two sides of it because there's the posterior side and the anterior side, the front and the back side. So on the posterior side, we produce two hormones. That is oxytocin, the one is the, that is called the bonding hormone, the one that helps uh, women to produce breast milk as they are breastfeeding, and also the one that actually is used as an injectable to actually help in labor and also uh, prevent postpartum hemorrhage, the bleeding after the, preg uh, after the giving birth. On the other side, the anterior part produces a lot of hormones, the luteinizing hormone, the follicostimulating hormone, and also the hormones that actually stimulate uh, the gonads, basically the testicles and the ovaries produce more hormones. However, we're not going to that because that's a topic for another day. So we are telling our CEO, hey, you know what? I am deficient in our hormone testosterone. That is our major target. Therefore, the CEO tells the managers to instruct the workers to actually produce this testosterone. So they understand Testosterone is produced in the testicles and there are cells in the testicles that are called the Leydig cells, these ones. So they receive a message from the pituitary, specifically the anterior pituitary, to actually produce testosterone. And this testosterone has different fats in the system. When I talk about fats, I mean it has to go through different um, pathways or channels for it to either be cleared from the system, stored or utilized uh, for the manhood. So understand this, that this testosterone is the major male hormone. Actually, it is the one that has to be protected by all means. When you talk to you about eating a high fat diet, saturated fats, the fatty meats, the eggs, the fish, when you tell you to fast, when you tell you to go to the gym and lift weights, when you tell you to take cold showers, when you tell you to enjoy the sun, when you tell you to sleep, this is the hormone that we are targeting to boost in men because the hormone that powers the man into a good life, powers the man to go out and actually do masculine stuff, powers the man into muscle growth and bone density, okay, the growth of the bones and all that, and even the brain. So it's a very important hormone in the man, it has to be protected by all means. Now, this hormone has multiple effects. Understand this, that anytime you hear something is free, let's say a free hormone in blood, that is the hormone or that is the substance that is available for metabolism, which is breakdown, or for activity. So in the system, once we produce testosterone, we release it into the blood. There's a lot of testosterone coming in into the blood. And this testosterone will suffer multiple channels. One, or will suffer multiple uh, pathways of metabolism or pathways of service. So one, part of it, which is basically the least, about 2% of your daily production of testosterone, 2% of it and the free one that is in blood will actually be used uh, in the body for secondary male characteristics, the broad shoulders, the deep voice. I'm not saying uh, that those people who have a, a very uh, thin voice are actually suffering from testosterone deficiency, but you can actually check your testosterone levels. But broad shoulders, a deep voice, 
uh, this dominance that a man has to go out and conquer that is all because of the levels of testosterone so those are secondary characteristics of the man and they're actually boosted by this testosterone so that tells you only two percent is actually going to do this function therefore we utilize a very small percentage of our daily production of testosterone in the blood we utilize a very small percentage about two to three percent but some of this testosterone is now captured and bound to protein there's something that is called the sex hormone binding globulin this is a protein and this protein proteins in the system in the blood they are used to bind drugs they are used to bind hormones and when they bind it they help in transportation but i want you to understand that anything that is bound to a protein when you bind something to a protein whether a drug whether a hormone it is not available for action it is not also available for metabolism for breakdown okay once it is bound it is now acting as a reservoir or a storage for this testosterone so once it binds to the sex hormone binding globulin now that one is not available for action however it is acting as a reservoir so that if the free testosterone in blood goes down we now break down this testosterone that is bound on the protein to release it into the system to maintain the levels of testosterone that is blood channel number two so it's bound to uh, the protein channel number three this testosterone will now the excess of it which is free will now be carried to the liver and in the liver that's where things start to happen the metabolism so it's broken down uh, remember the liver the function of the liver is to break down things either drugs hormones and all that but you break it down to either active metabolites for utilization or inactive metabolites for excretion through urine and stool and all that okay but testosterone when it's carried to the liver should we say it's unfortunately yes it is actually broken down to an active substance called dihydrotestosterone dht i know most of you have had this people who are suffering from prostate cancer and an enlarged prostate and baldness are actually uh, told uh, multiple things about the dht so dihydrotestosterone is an active metabolite of testosterone now so much of testosterone is being pumped into the liver and being broken down to the active metabolites and this active metabolite is supposed to be utilized however its function are very skewed because in the system is going to cause an enlarged prostate is going to cause uh, the destruction of the body of the prostate gland therefore psa will leak from the prostate into the bloodstream it can also on extremes cause you a lot of problems in terms of prostate cancer but most importantly dht is a substance that is involved in baldness so most men who are actually constantly and actively breaking down testosterone in the liver to give dht are the ones who suffer from a bald head but this bald head is very unique because it comes with a very good beard so most men who are actually suffering from low testosterone levels uh, and high dht are having a good a beard and a bald head and all these erectile dysfunction issues including man boobs so you should actually uh, block this pathway now there is an enzyme that is involved in the liver to break down testosterone to dht this enzyme is called 5-alpha reductase this is for the students and those who are professionals so 5-alpha reductase is a very very necessary enzyme here because it breaks it to dht however it's also an enzyme that is blocked by multiple drugs so when you see somebody having an enlarged prostate because of dht when you see the doctor writing a prescription to treat pattern hair loss or the loss of hair in men they will prescribe a drug that is called finasteride and sometimes they prescribe another one that is called diethyl stilbestero. So these two drugs, but specifically finasteride, this is a drug that is actually used uh, to actually prevent uh, hair loss in men. And it can also be used in women who have multiple hair, a lot of hair on their bodies, excessive hair, to block the formation of that excessive hair in their bodies. Now, this finasteride blocks this enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. Therefore, it blocks the conversion of testosterone into DHT. Once you block this platform, you will not form DHT. And when you don't form DHT, your testosterone level starts going up. And now you start having high testosterone levels in the system or in the blood that can actually be converted into different things. That is the, 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 the third pathway for testosterone. The last pathway, and this pathway is the most important one because it's a significant one clinically because of the side effects that are going to come with high DHT. Okay, But the last uh, platform or last pathway for testosterone is most times when a man is obese when a man consumes alcohol when a man has a fatty liver disease so they are thin from outside but fat from inside they have a fatty liver disease when a man consumes gmo foods that are rich in pesticides uh, that destabilize the uh, the hormone system of the man a lot of it is a lot of testosterone in their system is going to be converted to estrogen because 
the fat liver disease, obesity, the pesticide consumption, alcohol, and sedentarism are factors that actually activate the conversion of testosterone to estrogen and an active metabolite of estrogen that is called estradiol. Now understand this, there is also an enzyme that is involved in breakdown of testosterone to estrogen. And when you're fat, because fat is highly estrogenic, this fat is the one that actually activates this enzyme called aromatase. And this process from uh, of conversion of testosterone to estrogen is called aromatization. I talked about this when I was talking about man boobs in men. So this process of aromatization is conversion of testosterone into estrogen. And the enzyme is called aromatase. Now, this aromatase enzyme converts testosterone into estrogen. And when you get that, a man moves from being a man into being a woman. Because now you're raising the levels of estrogen and concurrently lowering the levels of testosterone. So you're becoming less of a man and more of a woman. And therefore, you will start to experience all the side effects of estrogen in a man. Number one, of course, erectile dysfunction is coming in. Number two, of course, an enlarged prostate. Because estrogen is a building hormone. In the uterus of a woman, it builds the fibroids, builds the cancers, builds the adenomyosis, and the endometriosis, all those. But in the prostate of a man, it builds up the cells of the prostate. And this buildup causes an enlarged prostate. And then the prostate gland now starts to press against the urethra and you start having difficulty in urination. Also, estrogen is the one that is also responsible, together with DHT, for prostate cancer. So you can imagine if you're constantly fat, consuming alcohol, you have a fatty liver and you're eating all these unnecessary foods that we talk about, the inflammatory foods, you're constantly converting testosterone into DHT problems and also converting testosterone into estrogen, more problems. Therefore, man boobs are coming here. Therefore, baldness is coming here. Therefore, super emotions are coming here. Therefore, <laughs> enlarged prostate is coming here. And also a fall in testosterone, a, shrinking, uh, a shrink in the testicles and the penis. So now you have micro penis. Uh, so those people who have a fat uh, pot belly, uh, we now understand where and how our penis starts to shrink. You might be thinking there is a pot belly that's actually covering up, mm -hmm. but the real thing is high estrogen levels are actually shrinking the penis. And then, of course, uh, uh, an increase in prostate-specific uh, antigen, the PSA that we talked about in the other live. So therefore, double tragedy. If you're obese and you're still consuming the unhealthy foods, you don't fast, you're sedentary, all you're doing is boosting estrogen levels, and then you get all these problems and also boosting DHT and then you get the same same problems. So therefore testosterone has to be protected by all means in a man. And how then do you protect testosterone levels? Of course fasting is very necessary. Okay because fasting helps you break down estrogen and now when you break down estrogen your testosterone level goes up because you want to get the balance because remember in a man testosterone is supposed to be higher than estrogen so when you bring down testosterone, you boost estrogen levels. You need to do the opposite. So fasting comes in handy. Dropping all those foods that actually bring you all these problems. Dropping the GMO foods, the fruits. Dropping the sugars, dropping the wheat, the seed oils and all that. Dropping alcohol. Instead of going to the bar, go and lift the bar. If you know what I mean. Okay? And then, of course, sleep is very necessary for here. Exercise is very necessary. The sun, because you require vitamin D for this process. Okay? And then consuming fatty meats. The fats, saturated fats like the ghee, tallow, coconut oil and all that. Eating fatty meats because that fat is the raw material that will help you make more testosterone. And that is cholesterol. Allow me to talk to you about the gym supplements that are used that have testosterone or the shots that they, the bodybuilders use to boost testosterone. Most of the bodybuilders are actually bald-headed because of this. So you're going to increase a lot of testosterone, which is free testosterone in the bloodstream. Once you increase free testosterone, it is now available for metabolism to get DHT. Therefore, you start having problems with erection. And possibly this is the reason why most people say people who go to the gym and who use those supplements, the bodybuilders, are very poor in bed. Now you see. Okay? And then, of course, free testosterone can actually be met metabolized also to give you estrogen. So, the more you think you're bodybuilding, the more you think you're having these muscles and mass, you're actually just growing fat. That's why most of the bodybuilders have a pot belly and they're just fat, though they lift heavy. Is because fat accumulation is basically estrogen. So they're accumulating a lot of estrogen in their system and that is a problem. So therefore, be patient with the gym. Don't go to the gym to become fat. Go to the gym to fix a lot of problems. Go to the gym to actually get healthy and lean and fit. Go and lift progressively. Don't go for ego lifting. Don't go for protein shakes. Don't go for gym supplements, the steroids. You don't deserve that. The gym is designed to mimic traditional activities. So basically bending, squatting, uh, pulling and pushing and all that. 
go to the gym and do those. And we've talked about the six compound exercises that you can do in the gym to boost testosterone levels. Above all, a cold shower, very necessary. The sun, sleep, easing stress levels, eating healthy and fasting. All those are options that you can actually use and incorporate them together to get a holistic approach to boosting testosterone, secondary to you leading a healthy life. So this is the metabolism of testosterone and I hope you've actually enjoyed this and you can actually use this to act as a background so that when you go to watch the live that I talked about the PSA and prostate screening, you can actually understand it better.